All right, so we got another reaction, and it's from New Rock Stars. We're reacting to their Superman 2025 new Easter eggs and cameos reveal. Now, I really want to talk to y'all about this and show this to y'all specifically, chat, for one reason only. I saw some of the cameos, and I was a little, and also, I just want y'all opinion on this new Superman. So, uh, let's, without further ado, hop into this. Welcome back to New Rockstars, I'm Eric Boss, and the 2025 Superman film is now filming in Cleveland, giving us looks okay. at the cast and a crowd. Also, the suit's cool. I, I think the suit's cool. Um, I'm not really a fan of it, not really not a fan of it. it it's all right. It, it feels comic comic book-esque. It, it, it feels solid. Um, Crisis so at the I don't feel... of the Daily Planet. While we still don't really know the plot of this film, okay. there are some fascinating details hidden in the design of Superman's suit and other Easter eggs concealed all over the set, visible in plain sight in the Cleveland area okay. now set photos like this can sometimes be seen as spoilers okay i'm guessing that's perry white if i had to guess if that that was anybody but since director james gunn is waving at these cameras i think we're okay to talk about the little we do see because it all bodes really well as and i am not y'all know how i feel about james gunn I, I i'm i've never been one to hold my tongue on james gunn but i'm very interested to see what he does do okay granted the new superman i'm gonna give him a chance but I was a big Henry Cavill fan, but I am I'm willing to hear him out. As we look ahead to this film, and the first footage we might see in a matter of weeks at San Diego Comic-Con. But I understand if you think set photos like this are too spoilery. Also, I don't think we dig it. Footage. You don't have to watch this video. I just want to give you a heads up. Okay, so this imagery that we've- All right, we got Mr. Terrific. Okay. And seeing shows David Corn Sweat suited up as Superman and as Clark Kent. But as Superman, he teams up with Michael Holt, Mr. Terrific, played in this movie by Eddie Gathegi, who okay. played the short-lived Darwin win in x-men first class okay. it seems like this is part of a joint rescue mission to save the staff of the daily planet we got a glimpse of superman's okay. new suit is that supposed to be brainiac in the back attacking is that supposed to be brainiac back there or what is this what is this supposed to be in this film in the official photo released by james gunn a few months back when superman was putting on his boots while in the background outside the window metropolis was being attacked by brainiac we okay. think these images give us a better sense of how corn sweat will look in the suit and how Okay. Oh, it really fits him now. So okay, he don't look bad. He looks like Henry Cavill. He looks very much like Henry Cavill. He doesn't look as buff as Henry Cavill. No homo. Uh, also, uh, I did see him recently in Twister. Uh, he was a he was a good actor in Twister. Not gonna lie. Uh, he. he he played his role well. In movement, these images were taken by photographers in the Cleveland area and posted to the Just Jared site. One batch of photos shows Superman with Mr. Terrific. Another shows him with Lois Lane, played by mm -hmm. Rachel Brosnahan in this movie. This image okay. of Superman and Mr. Terrific looking up at the facade of the Daily Planet building after the attack was taken by Joshua Gunter of Cleveland.com. So okay. this Superman suit in the film is actually a combination of several different designs from throughout the history of the Man of Steel. These colors are bright blue, bright red, and bright yellow, and the classic red trunks are back reflecting the classic superman look these red trunks were done away with in the new 52 redesign really like the new 52 redesign it was solid and of course the zack snyder henry cavill suit in the dceu but there's i liked henry cavill suit uh in the dceu but you know what it re reminded me of it reminded me of i think it was uh the tim burton batman i forget who who, who directed the uh 90s batman uh, but it reminded me of that like i feel like the suit should have been brighter like a brighter blue, but it remind like the, the 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 design aesthetic of the suit was really cool. But if it could have been a brighter, a brighter color would have been way better. There's nothing wrong with these red trunks, and it's really part of what we love about Superman. But in many ways, this suit does reflect the new 52 redesign from 2011. It has a yeah, I can see it. High collar that reaches up the neck and lines in the shoulder and collarbone regions that also come from that design. That suit also had a belt and on the back of that suit's cape was a black emblem. This suit has a yellow emblem on the back, which reflects the all-star Superman from 2005, drawn by Frank Quitely and the storyline written by Grant Morrison. This was a comic cover shared by James Gunn when he announced his film as Superman Legacy back in January 2023. But we have since learned that Gunn is not pulling inspiration from the plot of that story, but rather just from from the vibe and the tone of the character from this era as a Kansas farm boy balancing his ties to Earth with his ancestry and legacy from Krypton. But let's talk about this chest emblem as we see it designed here. It has it's a yellow border different. around the very outside of it, which comes originally from the 1940s Max Fleischer animated design, which also inspired the yellow border on the emblem from Earth 1. And the S of this logo is mostly formed by just one thick diagonal line, which comes from the design of the S in 1996's Kingdom Come. Yeah, but Kingdom one Come. thing you may But it also looks like the new 
newer one as well. Notice about this suit is that it doesn't really try to show off David Cornswit's musculature. Like it doesn't really pop out the biceps or cling yeah. to the abs in a way to make them super obvious. But that seems to be the point of this design. Cornswit gained a ton of muscle mass for this role, and okay. he does look properly bulky here. But I think the idea is that Superman does not have to be a visibly shredded fitness model. It's the same sentiment that informed Christopher Reeve's look in the Richard Donner 1978 Superman the movie. Reeve was also in peak physical condition for the role, but the point of the suit is that the colors and the emblem speak for themselves. And I get that. I get that. But make him look, you know what I'm saying? The dude's ripped. The dude's ripped. You know? Add, add a little pizzazz to it. I'm going to go into more and in why I think they're doing the suit this way at the end of this video. Also, it could be because this is a younger Superman. Could be a younger Clark. Oh, that also is a video. But more interestingly, I think, than the suit, is we get a glimpse of David Cornswit's take on Clark Kent. This photo taken by Cleveland photographer Eric Drost. Clark Kent wears round glasses and has a messy mop of hair on his head. And he wears an ill-fitting suit that makes him look deceptively small and clumsy. It's the same idea that we saw when Christopher Reeve played Superman and Clark Kent in 1978. It's really this extraterrestrial's caricature of humanity. And it's arguably the most interesting aspect of the character to watch. I believe David Cornswit was cast not just because he embodies that is this 3D animation? That looks like 3D animation. Arm of a Midwestern farm boy, but really because, like Christopher Reeve, he is a classically trained actor from Juilliard. It looked like 3D animation. I'm not so this don't look like 3D animation y'all. Farm boy, but really because Watch, watch how his head, watch how his head flows. And it's arguably the most interesting aspect of the character to watch. I believe David Cornswit was cast not just because he embodied. It just, it doesn't feel, I don't know how to explain it. It doesn't feel organic. I don't know how to explain it. The movement just didn't feel organic. He's that uh, American Boy Scout charm of a Midwestern farm boy, but really because like Christopher Reeve, he is a classically trained actor from Juilliard who brings physical comedy and even clowning to the performance. Like look at the set video where you can see how chaotic and awkward he's playing Clark Kent as he bumps into everyone on the street, but notice how he's deliberately walking on the right side of the street when it's really custom to walk on the left side, like, you know, street traffic in America. Yeah. And he's doing this intentionally to look as clumsy as possible for everyone who's in the vicinity of the Daily Planet building. Yet, when he approaches a baby carriage, he's like, ah, you know what? I'm okay not veering into that baby carriage because mission accomplished. I've been sufficiently awkward to fool everyone outside of my workplace. And I think this might be the most effective disguise of yeah. any live action Superman that we've seen since Christopher Reeve. And while his curly bangs seem plentiful here, but you know what I think about watching this? When I see this, I also can vaguely remember, I can, I can vaguely remember like in, in the Superman movie in fucking Justice League, all that joints, Batman v Superman. We didn't see much of Clark, right? We saw a little bit of him, but we saw Superman. And I like that. I like that it was, we always saw Superman. And I like that because he felt like a really good Superman. But seeing the attention to detail for this Clark, it feels really good. It feels, it gives it a little bit of light. And I'll be honest, it, I, I like it. Even with his hair being so completely different, you're not going to look at this guy and think, oh, this is Superman. This is a, this is really a great disguise. With nowhere to sweep them to when he becomes Superman, it would explain why there would be one stubborn curl dropping over his forehead. And I just love that detail. And you'll notice clutched in his hand is a Daily Planet newspaper. And we actually get a better look at this front page and this other set photo of newspaper dispensers for the Daily planet and the metropolis eagle photos that were taken by photographer larry pompeo so the metropolis eagle is a rival newspaper to the daily planet in the comics but let's start with this front page from the daily planet superman stops mta rail from running off the tracks the photo shows superman stopping a speeding train a nod to artwork from the yeah. superman for all seasons and if you look closely the photo credit is jimmy olsen but the article is written by clark kent himself and he writes quote metropolis hero superman blazed to the front of the runaway train and an impressive display of superhuman strength and bravery superman slowed the train to a halt okay clark take it easy with the sensationalism there bud now the metropolis eagle front page reports superman saves 20 after downtown building collapse it's gonna be funny if that downtown building was a daily planet building but the rival newspaper the metropolis eagle doesn't want to single out their rivals in print but the sub headline reads no fatalities in what could have been a tragic outcome and a nearby headline reads questions remain as to cause of incident the teaser headlines in the upper left corner have Oh, Lex Luthor wins art. What is that? Arcane Genius Award. So a little bit of jealousy right there. Are you still my uh, front page for me? I, I can see that being a thing. Okay. 
fun Easter eggs. A Chacos seeks factory workers. Chacos are a brand of cookies in the DC Comics, beloved by Martian Manhunter. And then Lex Luthor won the Arcane Genius Award, a reference to Anton Arcane, the genius supervillain arch enemy to Swamp Thing. Summer's the sweatiest time of the year. If you're one of those people who spends the rest of your year not thinking about how breathable or moisture wicking your underwear is, and these photos from Eric Drost and Joshua Gunter show quite a bit of the attack on the Daily Planet building and the rescue mission by Superman and Mr. Terrific. Now, Mr. Terrific is Michael Holt, a super genius with what he calls a natural aptitude for having natural aptitudes. And he's just known for just being a renaissance man and prodigy and his self-invented gadgetry known as T-spheres that kind of hover around him. And his look is to have this T on his face and this sweet jacket bearing Terrific on the back and fair play on the sleeve. He was played by friend of the channel Echo Kellum in the CW Arrowverse continuity. Okay. Now, we know this is the Daily Planet building because these photos show the front entrance with this awesome spinning Daily Planet globe over the door that even glows like a lantern at nighttime and much of mr terrific's fear tech will likely be added in post-production but he seems to be using a aaron is he doing blackface no he's black you can't black you that'd be blackface square bro you can't blackface a blackface you feel me that's, that's that's just a dude being a dude that's just a black dude being extra black t spear <laughs> ship to rescue employees at the daily planet the film's production is using a practical stand-in for now with a big T on the side, but I think it's just part of the T-Sphere ship that has a hatch for characters to emerge out of, and the finished look will be completed later with CGI. Now, yes, and can fly and probably could have rescued all these people just by himself, and he wouldn't have needed Mr. Terrific's help here, but think about it. Maybe he was too surrounded by co-workers as Clark Kent, and he needed to maintain his cover by letting a different superhero save them through a different means, and then, you know, maybe Superman showed up after it was all over, and there was a debate over which superhero should this probably be like first save maybe first 30 minutes 30 minutes of the film 30 45 minutes of the film to get all the credit for this rescue now these photos include the daily planet staff exiting the t-sphere ship one by one looking dazed we see gunter's photo of lois lane and we should note that lois is wearing the purple top that lois lane is often seen wearing in the 1996 superman the animated series and then drost's photos of wendell pierce as daily planet editor-in-chief i know Perry it white followed i know by it skylar gizondo as photographer jimmy, jimmy olsen okay. followed by snl's beck bennett as daily Planet reporter Steve Lombard, who is based on the character Ted Baxter in the Mary Tyler Moore show originally, but was also based on the physique of football player Joe Namath, which explains Beck Bennett's beefy, mustached sports dad look. Next, we see Michaela Hoover as Daily Planet gossip columnist Kat Grant, followed by Christopher McDonald as Daily Planet reporter Ron Troop. Nicholas Holt has also been spotted on set as Lex Luthor, and then Sarah Sampaio has Eve Troop. Nicholas Holt. Nicholas Holt? Uh, dude got some acting chops. Does he's a he's a really good act. I'm not saying he doesn't have the acting ability to do it. I just feel like they, I feel like there's somebody who's more of a Alex esque person. You know what I'm saying? Like Lex Alex esque person. This has also been spotted on set as Lex Luthor, and then Sarah Sampaio as Eve Teskmacher, Lex Luthor's personal assistant. Folks in Cleveland also noticed Ryan Reynolds fuck no. the crew changing some street signs in the area to pay homage to DC Comics writers like Jim Lee, Grant Morrison, Mark Wade, and Jeff Loeb. So James mm -hmm. Gunn seems to be directing this 2025 Superman film in a way that embraces the full history and legacy and iconography of the comics and the animated history and of course Richard Donner's original Superman film. Really the whole reason we have Super hero cinema today he wants this superman to be something that viewers of all generations can associate when they think of superman and that's just going to be really important as the first film of the dcu the one that sets a standard for the dcu going forward and this might just be me opining based on disney head bob Iger's comments last november about prioritizing entertainment over messaging but across the industry there seems to be a desire to go back to formula for major ip films that are going to cost them over 200 million dollars to make like when warner brothers was looking for its next christopher for Nolan, they ended up going with Zack Snyder's pitch that Superman and Batman could start in the nihilistic else world of Frank Miller's The Dark Knight Returns. And while that was really cool and worked on its own, you could argue, there is so much more to the character of Superman than just that one particular graphic novel. And I think the studio now wants a safer bet with an undeniably- Bro, I feel like, I genuinely feel like Zack had good direction. It's just the execution that fell apart. 
if that makes sense. I, I like the concept. I like where he was going, but it's like what he wanted from Superman isn't who Superman is. And granted, I really enjoyed the way he did it, but I felt like he left so much on the table for Superman, right? And like, I love Henry Cavill's look as Superman, but in something like this, what it sounds like James Gunn is making, I felt like that'll been a, such a refreshing, uh, like a, such a refreshing look. And now like looking at this, I get a better understanding of why truly like why they're there's no Henry Cavill as much as we love Henry Cavill. Henry Cavill is forever tied to Zack Snyder. And if he wants, if James Gunn wants to make a name for himself, he would have to do something with a new act. If he wants his name to be synonymous with a Superman film, it couldn't have been Henry Cavill because Henry Cavill's name would have been tied to one too many. Iconic Superman story that reminds us all of the Richard Donner, Christopher Reeve era. I just think when you see Hugh Jackman's Wolverine returning in a classic yellow and blue suit and the Fantastic Four returning in classic classic blue and white suits and Superman in this classic red yellow and blue suit with something to love from all areas of the character this yeah. brightness in the color palette is not a coincidence folks it's these studios recognizing that maybe the best path for a superhero IP has already been laid out for them in the decades of comics and animation and past successful film adaptations and they don't need to be different or reinvent the wheel the wheel is good also we have to be realistic with past that's past successful adaptation you have to be realistic with that because it was a different time on its own and then when it comes to superman i think james gunn understands is that many of us have just been longing to simply I feel believe like, a man can I, I feel like it'll be close to the superman the adventures with superman and if it's close to the adventures with superman i'm rocking because i hate to say it adventures with superman is possibly one of the best superman series we've gotten to date fly not expect that he must fly and fly a particular way but just Believe again. One last image I wanted to put here at the end because I think it actually could be a bit spoilery, so feel free to stop watching now. This image shows Superman being detained by Rick Flagg Sr., played by Frank Grillo, who played Brock Rumlow in the MCU, father to Rick Flagg Jr., Joel Kinnaman, who was killed by Peacemaker in The Suicide Squad, as well as a group of army soldiers. And on the far right, that's the engineer, played by Maria Gabriela de Faria, a member of the Authority, having a nanotech body, and then directly behind Superman, holding him that is Ultraman, a Superman counterpart with a Ultraman. Why the fuck would they introduce ult? Oh, that why would that be Ultraman? Why would that be Ultraman? Why would that be Ultraman? Of all all the beings, why would that be Ultraman? Like me looking at it, right? Me looking at it. This you could not be a you. Because it's something right there we can't make out. This could be anybody. If this is Ultraman, who's supposed to have the same color scheme as Clark and from a And if we're already bringing in a another fucking world, it's GG's few different versions in the DC comics, but he's really just known to be empowered by kryptonite. But I'm not exactly sure which version of Ultraman this is. So Superman in this movie not... is going to have to face an antagonistic US government with some very powerful allies. Comment down below with your thoughts on all this. Follow me at EA Voss. Subscribe to all three channels in the New Rockstars Network for breakdowns and news coverage of everything you love. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye. W video. That last bit about it being Ultraman. I think you're off the mark. Bye far yeah no i i highly doubt that's ultraman and that just feels like cheap writing to me if i'm being completely honest uh but i rock with it man a w video